I love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel... Join me, Andrew Pearce and Bev Turner, Monday to Thursday, 9.30am. Who benefits from that? Not the British public. And on Fridays, join us, Tom Harwood and Ellie Costello from Britain's Newsroom. That's what you get with this show, that's fantastic. If it's happening, we're talking about it on Britain's Newsroom. GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomney, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Good evening, I'm Ray Addison in the GB Newsroom. Our top story this evening, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel will take mighty vengeance against the terrorist organisation Hamas after more than 200 Israelis were killed and 1,100 injured due to a surprise attack. Nearly 200 Palestinians have also subsequently died after Hamas fired thousands of rockets and gunmen crossed the border. Local news reported Israeli civilians in border towns barricading themselves into their homes and pleading for help. Hamas says Israeli captives are being held in secure places, including tunnels. Netanyahu said Hamas wants to murder us all. What happened today has never been seen in Israel, and I will make sure that it does not happen again. The entire government is behind this decision. The IDF will immediately use all its strength to destroy Hamas's capabilities. We will destroy them and we will take mighty vengeance for this black day that they have forced on the state of Israel and its citizens. Dozens of Hamas terrorists have been stopped by Israeli naval personnel, according to Israel's defence forces. Warning for those watching on TV, you may find the following footage distressing. Earlier this morning, the IDF pursued dozens of terrorists along the southern maritime area as they tried to enter Israeli territory via the water. Soldiers opened fire on the militants, successfully destroying four vessels. Hamas terrorists were also stopped as they tried to cross into Israel along the southern border. We're back here. A significant quantity of what is thought to be cocaine has been discovered off the coast of Dorset and Hampshire. The National Crime Agency is investigating after a fisherman discovered holdalls containing hundreds of kilos of powder in the sea off Purbeck. More washed up on a beach on the Isle of Wight. The NCA say the Class A drugs would have originated in South America. They're urging the public to report any similar packages to their local police force. 260 suspected rapists have been labelled as females by police over the last four years. That's according to data from the Crown Prosecution Service, which was obtained by the Daily Telegraph. The classification comes despite the Home Secretary urging police not to label rape suspects as women, as by law it can only be committed by a biological male. The figures show a further 209 suspects were recorded as sex unknown. And finally, Boris Johnson's barrister ex-wife, Marina Wheeler KC, is set to become Labour's whistleblowing czar for women. That's according to a report in the Independent newspaper. The leading barrister help, will help the party with plans to strengthen employment rights to safeguard women from abusive colleagues. 
The party reportedly plans to give women who suffer harassment at work whistleblower status to encourage them to come forward with complaints without fear of speaking out. This is GB News across the UK on TV, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying, play GB News. Now let's go to those headliners. Hello, I'm Josh Howie and welcome to Headliners, the newspaper review show with a difference. What we lack in incisive political commentary, we make up with jokes about our traumatic childhoods. And tonight I'm joined by two of the best in their respective fields, Cresta Wetton and Bruce Devlin. Hello. How about my traumatic child? Well, I've seen your act. Uh, so, uh... Burn. Oh, indeed, my political insight. You didn't insight. even need to mention your childhood, but it just comes across so right, fluidly. Right, OK, you can but, see it in the eyes. Exactly. And look at you calling each other before the show tonight, obviously matching your outfits, coming from a dinner party, or you're <laughs> off to the theatre, or you're sort of James Bond or something. Gosh, shall I wear black? Go on, I never wear black. I'll wear black. And then I turned up and, and we look like the Adams family. Well, I think oh, you look sorry. wonderful. Thank you. I'm not sure which one's the beard, though. Anyway, right, let's uh, <laughs> look at those front pages. The Mail on Sunday. Don't kill me. Sunday Telegraph. Hamas terrorists butcher civilians as stunned Israel suffers 9-11 moment. Observer. Hundreds die and hostages held as Hamas assault shocks Israel. The Sun, on Sunday, BGT, acts left me suicidal. The Mirror, Holly and Phil, mend rift over kidnap horror. And finally, The Daily Star, scream me up, Scotty, and those were your front pages. OK, well, we're going to kick off uh, Cresta with the mail on Sunday. Um, this is obviously... I'm just going to get this out of the way. This is... Uh, something very close to my heart personally. And um, I think the producers are worried I'm going to go mental just from uh, seeing my online Twitter feed well, all day. I think that would be fair. But uh, I will maintain my calmness and be a professional broadcaster. Please, let's, let's get on with the story and we'll, we'll talk about it. OK, uh, so the headline is Don't Kill Me. That's the petrified plea of Noah, 25, kidnapped from a peace festival by Hamas terrorists. One of 60 Israelis, including children, mothers and old women, um, who've been snatched uh, in a murderous invasion. So we've been seeing clips all day um, of what's going on uh, in Israel. It's it's absolutely shocking. I mean, and this there's so much of it available online. You know, it's, it's kind of modern warfare, isn't it, that we, we can see things. Like, when I was a kid in the 90s, you saw quite sort of sanitised uh, footage of wars, I think. But now it's, it's online, it's on Twitter for everybody, and it's Hamas who are putting the footage out. Well, that's the crazy thing, exactly, is that they're proud of it. Yeah. And uh, and I, I totally agree. I mean, the, the, I've never seen anything like this before. Um, and this particular clip where this still was taken from, the desperation, the horror, mm. this young woman being um, stolen away, and and so many other clips, and, and old women, uh, you know, grandmas and, and, and mothers with their children. Um, it's... The inhumanity. I mean, this is, I think it's a wake up call for the world because I think some people think Hamas, oh, they're, they're just trying to get freedom. They're, they're a genocidal death cult. And seeing this footage is like, you know, and Hamas, to be fair, has been prescribed by the UK government since 2021. But you still are seeing some media organizations and certainly a lot of um, online. Um, Figures, political figures, whatever, still kind of doing a bit of a whataboutery or still not referring to them as a what they are, which is a terrorist organization. Right. And trying to do this kind of false equivalence. It's it's unbelievable. And terrorism's see. the right word, isn't it? When you get yeah. this kind of footage, it it invokes a feeling of terror. It's it's really not as much terror as Bruce is afraid that I'm gonna come with a question to him <laughs> <laughs> about this particular story. But uh yeah, I, 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 I've never seen anything like it. And this is young people, this is... Um, it's everyone. I don't think people appreciate what a tiny country Israel is and how deeply this is going to impact their, their psyche um, and, uh, and the Jewish community around the world. Let's move on, Bruce, to the next one. Obviously, the, the Sunday Telegraph, mm -hmm. they have... We've got some other news in a second, but they have also... Um, they've got a big headline at the top, if you mm. want to read it, and... Oh, sorry. Yes, Hamas terrorists butcher civilians as stunned Israel suffers a 9-11 moment. Yeah, I, I, uh, 
And uh, I, I just want to say one thing. I, I, people are, I guess, going to use these events and this suffering to make their own political points. And mm. I don't want to be too much of a hypocrite whilst criticizing people for doing it. And I, but I just, the way that other media outlets portray this stuff, and this morning I was woken up by all these messages, and the BBC did not release anything until Israel had retaliated. And then, so their, then their big urgent news update could be Israel fires rockets into retaliation. That's what they have to go with. It's not, you can just call this out in and of itself. Mm. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, look, people are going to be reading about this. People are going to be learning about it. Uh, let's do some other stories quickly because uh, we do have some interesting things that are affecting people closer to home. Yeah, so there are two things in the Sunday Telegraph. The first is Labour mulls the return of student grants funded by richer graduates. And the second thing is that Sunak is to end sick note culture amid fears, amidst fears, I should say, that GPs are too lenient in so signing people So they can connect those stories because then you're going to graduate and then you're going to start calling in the sick. Seems, yes, so you don't have to pay for somebody else's loan. I mean, that's, it's amazing, isn't it? The idea that, that richer students are going to pay for other... I mean, nobody feels rich when they've laid out nine grand for tuition fees, no. right? Yeah. No one's like, you know what, I could just chuck in a couple more grand for somebody else. Yeah. Um, amazing. And, of course, richer people pay higher taxes anyway. So it's yeah. an additional tax on top of it. The problem is that the system that we have in the UK, and obviously you're from Scotland, they have a different system mm -hmm. there, but it's not working. It, we're not raising enough money for our universities. They are capping it because it is an obviously an incredibly unpopular thing. And they are trying to work out some kind of system. And just now it's come in, I think people are now going to be paying for 40 years. I mean, that's... Well, it's really just a graduate tax, isn't it? It's not like a loan that you're going to hope to pay back. It's just, oh, that's, that's the class you're in now, you pay this tax. Yeah. Um, I mean, why don't we just have fewer degrees? I keep saying this. I don't know. What do I don't you think, think they're all useful, are they? Things like apprenticeships and stuff like that, as opposed to. Well, that would be great. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm just, yeah. I'm very wary of anything. You can come on headliners. You don't need any kind of qualifications. <laughs> Absolutely to come on not. I'm a so. shining example of that. I know nothing, and yet I'm here every month. Absolutely, it's fantastic. Yeah. I feel reborn. Really, you are the prime vehicle for which we. I am the warning on the cigarette packet. packet. Very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, and also it's kind of like it's a disincentive, surely, to work hard. Like you're thinking, oh, I'm going to yeah. get a really good degree. I'm going to get a first, and I'm going to get an amazing job because. I want to get paid well. No, Do you think it's the nah. case, though, that people going through the degrees thinking they're going to get the good jobs become so inherently depressed when they don't get them that they then have to go to the doctor to be signed off with stress or anxiety? What a beautiful segue to the next story. No, but you want to not earn anything. You want to keep your minimum wage job and then you never have to pay the graduate. I know. Degree. That's getting, one way of looking at it. Getting this job, getting a job, <laughs> it's just been the what I've got paying tax now, having all, oh, all these out here, uh, having to buy my kids fruit because oh. they know that I can afford it. Um, but, yeah, this other story about the crackdown on Sick Note Britain, again, there is an issue. Uh, this statistic here, 9 out of 10 cases of people, when they do go to the doctors, they get the Sick Note. Mm -hmm. But what they're proposing... What, what, what are they saying? How, how is this going to be cured? What's the, what are they, what's the suggestion for this? Well, th there's going to be... An, the government are going to have an overhaul where they're going to make it harder. So, currently, if you get... A, I think it's PIP in England and it's a dis an adult disability payment in Scotland. You um, you fill out some questionnaire or you're asked and you have to, I, I think, get 12 points and then they will give you the payment, um, if you see what I mean. OK. Yeah. So, you definitely can't get it if you can't read? Um, no. Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe, get, maybe get more. Though. I don't know. You might get more if you're dyslexic. But it sounds like they are going to be adding more levels which, of course, is going to be greater costs to implement the system. Yeah, they're going to put more criteria in, and, but then they'll need more people in which to do the assessments and stuff, so it's all kind of... Yeah, so just let the people be off sick for a day. By the way, I uh, hope Nick Dixon's feeling better. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's, uh, let's move on to The Observer now, Cressida. Obviously, again, we have a picture, uh, and they're dealing with the situation in Israel, slightly different way for me, but uh, do you want, should I just talk about it? Because that's yeah, what go I ahead, know. Go ahead. No, just because this is what I was just alluding to earlier, is just how different papers were written. And The Observer is a different publication to The Guardian, but just mm -hmm. the way that they sort of... Hundreds die and hostages held as Hamas. It's, it, it, when you're decoding this stuff, that you know, they, it, it, it's sort of like... It's not like 100 is, hundreds of Israelis are murdered and whatever, mm. they have to both sides it and they have to sort of say unverified videos released by Hamas. It's like, what, why? Everything has to be slightly niggled at. Yeah. 
Some unverified videos I saw today uh, in London of people waving Palestinian flags and looking like they were at a party. Well, just... this is this the celebration of that cult uh, of that of a murder cult. Uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. You don't look accidents have happened historically, and we're going to. If you start getting back into the history of Israel, mm -hmm. of course, it's a different thing. But this idea, this 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 uh, this celebration of of death, mm. um, is is disgusting to see, uh, and that affects the, like you say, this the, these cars driving around. This is in London. This is where I live. This is where my family live. Uh, friends and stuff to see it um, is is shocking, horrible. And, we, and the last time something happened in Israel, the, you had the same thing. You had cars driving through North London with uh, shouting out death threats, rape threats to Jewish women, and uh, I, they were arrested, but they never went to jail. Nothing ever happened to them. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the next story, Starmer, and then we won't talk about it anymore okay. for today. I, I don't know if I believe you. Uh, Starmer warns Labour, don't get giddy over prospect of election victory. Uh, so that's that's the spirit, Starmer. He's, uh, he's saying, hey, guys, chill out. chill out. We haven't got it yet. In fact, they've even... The party's got a ban on introducing him as the next Prime Minister at their conference. It's just kind of like... It's a very American thing, isn't it? That's what yeah. they do. They're like, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. But he's just trying to be... So the English way, or the British way, sorry, I should say, is, <laughs> hi, guys. I mean, this guy's doing all right. <laughs> we'll see no, what happens. We always say, say it after the set. See how it goes first. Oh, don't, yeah, yeah. Don't introduce them as, as brilliant. Big up, don't I big suppose up. my dichotomy is the word giddy and Starmer in the same sentence <laughs> because he doesn't really seem to get elated all too often. No, all so people I'm, don't get elated about him. Well, that's the thing. I don't think he's at home buzzing out of his tights thinking, whoo, -hoo, all Machiavellian and like Fagan and rubbing his hands and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I did find endearing about him was that he bought a pitch of land for his mum so she could have donkeys. Yeah, which was the big famous gotcha the day I think it was the Daily Mail like foul Starmer owns land and then it turns out that it was for a it was donkey, donkey for his mum yeah, yeah exactly it was massively That's backfired uh, but I think that it's a clever call because I mean we saw that in previous elections where it looked like the, the opposition was going to win uh, but I think British people just get very turned off by that kind of attitude. And they Yeah, and it's sort of the worst thing. It's like, oh, you think you're great, do you? Well, I'm going to show you. We just won't have it, will we? We'll put you in your place. No, um, exactly. And uh, let's go to the Daily Star. Let's finish on that one. Yeah, I'm glad I've got quite a serious story yeah, to contribute. Yes, yeah, so scream me up, Scotty. This is to do with um, Patrick um, from Star Trek, who played John Luke Picard. Patrick, Patrick Stewart. Stewart, that's it. The My... greatest actor, our greatest living actor. Do you think he is? Well, I thought I... that was Maggie Smith. No, but uh, yeah, maybe male, male actor. Oh, no. Bald actor. Ah, right, OK. OK, it all comes that's, out That's now. fair enough. That could be Maggie. We don't know if that's a wig. You know Don't what I mean? cut to me when I say bald, <laughs> please, <laughs> So, anyway, his Los Angeles home has gone back on the market because it was haunted by an angry ghost. Yeah. Not just a ghost, but an angry ghost. And he said that he came back in one night and he was in his bedroom, which was on a different floor, and his nostrils were filled with the smell of something roasting in the, uh, in the <laughs> oven, um, which was the floor below. So it was a culinary... It could be a chef that perhaps... Was yeah, trapped but, between yeah. two worlds. Or a delivery uh, driver whizzing past. Yeah, well, and he went down. There were, <laughs> but he found his son, and the son was like, "Oh, all these books are on the floor. It must be a ghost." As opposed yeah, to because it was that his son is just messy and had a big party. Throwing, That's what it sounds like to me. Throwing his boots. So I, I don't know if it was an intellectual ghost or, as I say, a culinary yeah, ghost. I think what it was a it was a ghost who was a fan of the original Star Trek series. Fair enough. That's it. If you know your geeky stuff, there. Right. That's the front pages covered. But join us in a few minutes for political polls, SNP, police, and COVID. Just another Saturday. Day night. See you there. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From six, it's breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News, Britain's news channel. Nightmare commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's, at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB+, Plus on the Smart Speaker app and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's, on GB News and GB News Radio.
Join me, Andrew Pearce and Bev Turner, Monday to Thursday, 9.30am. Who benefits from that? Not the British public. And on Fridays, join us, Tom Harwood and Ellie Costello from Britain's Newsroom. That's what you get with this show, that's fantastic. If it's happening, we're talking about it on Britain's Newsroom. GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London-Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel... Welcome back to Headliners with me, Josh Howie. And uh, one of these comics is Cresta Wett and the other one's Bruce Devlin, but I'm going to leave it up to you to guess who is who. <laughs> now let's head first to The Observer and Cresta. At this point, is it even worth holding the election? I don't know. Um, uh, the Tories definitely don't know. Poll predicts landslide Labour vi election victory with 12 cabinet ministers losing their seats. So it's looking very dramatic. They're not just going to go, they're going to go badly. Um, so the modelling is currently telling us this is going to be like 1997 all over again. Mm. Um, I don't, will D. Ream get back together for I, this? I, are they still with us? young to know. Uh, that's <laughs> true, actually. He was a four-year-old child. Yeah, well, point. yes. Well, there was a very catchy pop song. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so they're predicting uh, all that all over again. Mm. Um, the, the, one of the things it says, though, that the Tories have got up their sleeve is that uh, they still believe they can go after Starmer because the British public haven't accepted him. So yeah. they believe in him just slightly more than he believes in himself, but not much, I think. Exactly. Um, well, I mean, th that's the thing, Bruce. I mean, is there anything that Sunak can do? I mean, he, he came up with some policies this week, A-levels changing, uh, no smoking and whatnot, but is that going to make any dent, any impact? I'm not necessarily sure, to be perfectly honest with you. Going back to the Starmer thing, though, I, I appreciate people's view of him, but he has remained a constant in that party when how many replacements have we had in the Conservative Party and all that Fair kind of enough. stuff? Fair. I think Sunak should maybe stop banging on about climate change and then popping in his private jet. That there are some Just some wee things that have happened, and the other thing is, um, I think one of the dilemmas with the with the Tories have at the moment is when to call this election, because there, there were even six months ago they were saying do it now, mm -hmm. whilst they don't hate us that much, <laughs> and it seems to me they're like they keep on like then it was going to be pushed back to the it's spring. Like Russian roulette. Yeah, well, exactly. It's yeah. Like, when's the when's the most optimal time? And they're sort of hoping the more we push it back the less we're going to mess up, but it, they keep these things keep I on happening. I think at home, Rishi keeps playing that D-Ream song and thinking, things are going to get better, let's just... It's just not. It's like the balloon's going up and up. Rishi, let go! But other people are saying, no, hang on, there's a bit of... Even the Conservatives oh, yeah, yeah. can't agree. That's a good analogy, I uh, like that, yeah. yeah. But there seems so, to be quite a lot of infighting in yes. the Conservative Party. I mean, did I read the other day that Liz Truss is thinking about making a challenge for the leadership again? And you're like, hen, pipe down. It's well, great, yeah. No, I don't think so. It's the cost of living, isn't it? That's what everyone's upset about. Well, this is it. The two things that people really care about, exactly, NHS and, and, uh, mm. and cost of living. So sort that out, maybe. That might be... That might help. 
All right, on to the Sunday Times, Bruce. And is it time for the SAP to start running Scotland? And I don't mean into the ground. Well, this is the thing. The SNP figures have urged Hamza Youssef to pause independence push. Now, obviously, with them being a nationalist party, that cause will never be away, that will never be off the table. Mm. It is considered opinion that they should maybe be focusing on other stuff. And you'd mentioned about cost of living crisis and all that kind of thing. And a lot of people are wondering why they still have European and international offices all over the world and all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know what's happening with the camper van. Um, I don't know if they're going to be using that in any kind of electoral moving around. So the thing with, I think, Hamza, who currently resides in Broughty Ferry with his wife, which is a posh part of Dundee, mm. still has a seat in Glasgow, so I think he's trying to change that. But word on the street is as well that a lot of, well, it's um, it's in dispatches that a lot of SNP MPs are going to stand down at the next election. Mm. So maybe they know something I don't know about their polling and all that kind of thing and whatever. But I think there are a lot of people in Scotland, particularly when you had the leadership contest, and there was so much focused on the leaders, you know, beliefs on gay people or their religion as opposed to what you're doing about the roads, you know, what you're doing about the bins, what you're doing about people that can't eat and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So I don't know what the future holds. I've got to say, Bruce, I am incredibly impressed with how knowledgeable you are of Scottish politics for someone who's from Northern Ireland. I think That's makes... so true. And yes. from Welsh parents. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're talking here, are they, Chris, are they going to get rid of uh, Humza for 2026? Because that's the election they're also worried about, because it's going to be the Scottish parliamentary elections. Yeah. Are they sort of written off? The, uh... He's got to go, hasn't he? Everyone just thinks he's silly. He's always asking where are the men when they're clearly at war and making gaffes. And, I mean... I... Don't you think his his no, time's I, up? Yeah, but is it is it his time that's up or is it the SNP? Well, that's a good point. Maybe it's both. I mean, you get to a point where you think, come on, you've had your referendum, like, isn't it? When when will it ever be over? It's like the football, isn't it? It's never... But the, you're exactly right. But the thing is now, with this having come up, even it, because you have people that want to rejoin the EU, don't you? So when, when... And I do believe at some point in the future, Scotland will become independent. I think there's too many kind of grassroots children voters of nationalist parents that want to carry that on, if you see what I mean. But then you'll immediately have a fraction that are like, we need to rejoin the UK. So this is just going to ping pong and ping pong like the, the yeah, EU thing. Keep us employed. Yeah. Telegraph next and Cresta, what's this amazing new tactic the police have where uh, they go to where crime occurs? Pretty much. Police to target anti-social hotspots after trials cut crime by 24%. So, yeah, it turns out if you put police in the areas where crime is happening, you see a reduction in crime. This That's crazy. good. This, this is crazy. Yeah. This is like Surely. Sherlock Holmes type stuff going it's, on here. It's, it's really funny. Research from Essex showed 40,000 hours of extra patrols resulted in a 50%, 55% uh, reduction Which in anti. Which is 40,000 hours, isn't it? From what it was. And are these. <laughs> exactly. With, exactly. It be, with it being in Essex and having seen the only way is Essex, are these crimes against fashion and. Uh, <laughs> or are they actually violent well, against I tanning? Think, I think natural to be a crime tanning. against. What was that? Against natural tanning. <laughs> against natural tanning. Oh, I love people That's from a, Essex. It's a gateway by the way. crime. Okay. They're getting a million pounds to get some software to identify local crime hotspots. I mean, what's wrong with a pin in the map? And Should they not? Say... Well, well, actually, <laughs> never mind a pin in the map. Why don't they just walk around on the beat? Surely well, you'd pick up some stuff. Try to increase but, that. No. Yeah, no, no. Uh, it's, the interesting statistic for me, Bruce, was how this doesn't just reduce, have such a large impact on antisocial crime, but this mm. has also been proven to have a, an impact on, on all crime. And sort of, it, it, it seems to be direct evidence that when you, when you, um, when you make a difference to antisocial crime, that, that has a knock-on effect. But then, is that not what the police are meant to do? Like, I don't understand. I, I don't want to quote another panel saying the panelists saying this is a non-story. But I just would have thought that the fact of the matter is that yeah, if you tackle serious crime, then it's a kind of ripple effect, isn't it? So it, we saw that in New York in the 90s, and that was part of their policy. But no, I mean, I totally agree with you. Mm. As you're reading this article, you're like. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on, what are you doing? This is it. Are you, it's, it's so frustrating. Isn't it? We used to have uh, this headmaster that made us all stand up when we came into the room, which we all thought was really silly because we were kids and we didn't want to do it. And then we got a new headmaster who didn't care and the behaviour went downhill. Well, there we go. Right? Really? The police wow. If only they employed you. Yet more obvious fallout from lockdowns in the Observer Cresta. Not that I'm not impartial, obviously. 
Uh, thousands of COVID generation under fives excluded from schools in England. Uh, so this article is claiming that the lockdowns have caused children, little children, to be going to school still needing nappies. Mm -hmm. But that does... I mean, they had lots of time at home with their parents, so surely they should have been getting potty trained at home. I mean, that's never been a teacher's job, has it? But I think that at home... No, that's true, but the point is that they're not... They're not spending much time outside. They haven't acclimatised with other children, necessarily. There's also massive language differences, like, uh, problems in terms of being able to communicate and also understanding words. So it's, it's not just potties. I wear a nappy. That's, I'm not ashamed. No, but that's... When I first read this, I thought, are they taking the proverbial? Because, as you say, they were in lockdown, so what was the child just stuck in a corner of the room and left alone while, I don't know, they were enjoying some you're, sparkling penny? You're talking about my uh, parenting, yes? Is the answer. <laughs> right. I've heard about your okay. parenting. On you. YouTube. Um, but uh, this is a very s serious thing here because what we have is a generation of children with a terrible start in their school career and it accumulates over time. And not only that, um, it's going to affect the other children as well mm -hmm. because of all these resources to try to get the, those kids to catch up. Yeah. We are talking about a massively impacted generation here. Well, Absolutely. it was a friend of my sister that uh, I think a friend of theirs had a baby during lockdown and then all these people got together and it was the first time the babies had seen each other. Yeah. And they were fascinated because obviously they weren't, they weren't used to it at all. Um, but I have a friend that had two lockdown children and they were all potty trained. And, you know, not, it's, I, mean, I believe I, I it or not, having, I've never had a child. You know what, I think one of the things is having siblings. And I think my five-year-old... That was a massive help, having older brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. ha did help them with all of those impacts. Mm -hmm. But also, it's just things like masks and stuff. Kids, babies need to see faces. That's how mm -hmm. they learn about expressions and, yeah. and whatnot. So, I guess maybe the most frustrating thing is that this kind of stuff was highlighted at the time yeah. mm -hmm. and ignored. And yeah. now we're going to see the impact on it. And, um, 100%, yeah. Very, very annoying. Right, the Telegraph here, Cresta, with Labour pushing a policy that I don't think they actually come out with particularly well. Labour vows to force political parties to disclose data about diversity of candidates. Mm. On the surface, it does sound a bit racist, doesn't it, the way they've phrased it there? Uh, you, you've got to list everybody by their... Their, uh, yeah. yeah, by their identifying characteristics. So Annalise Dodds uh, is saying that Labour would force... Woman! Woman well, yes. Man! Uh, oh, yes. If you, I'm just giving... That's how they would Thank do you. it. Oh, I thought that was an impression of Annalise Dodds. How much that helps. That's very that's the thing. Um, Yeah, well, she's, she's saying that the Tories haven't got the guts to do this. No, I, firstly, they've had some female prime ministers, so, you know, there's that. And... <laughs> We've just recently... Rishi's been talking about life sentences for, for sexual murder, and it's, she's implying that the Tories have got no interest in women's issues, and I just don't think that that's... I don't know, and I don't case. think it's just talking about women here. And, of course, there is hypocrisy, Bruce, because this is coming from a party that's never had a female leader. But this is the whole thing. Why, why aren't Raina or, or Nandi in the top job? Well, Raina, I understand, but Nandi... <laughs> I, vote, I, I voted for Nandi, although I think Keir has actually been all right, but that was my choice, was least Nandi. I think she's incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't agree with her on everything before people start tweeting me. But, um, <laughs> but that is who I originally went for. But... Um, the other thing that... I mean, first of all, number one reading this was that this information has has already been put out there. There's already a law that this, this information is put out there. Secondly, I don't know if they think this is going to have the impact that they think it will. Like, people can go, oh, this party has got this much representation and this much diversity. When, first of all, we see... Uh, so, th this is a sub-clause. Uh, we see the Conservatives with seemingly a much more diverse leadership in terms of ethnicity and and uh, and gender. What? Well, I, I was going to say that, but then I thought, well, no, because I don't know what their personal opinions are. I, I reject this well, idea, that... you know, like, oh, well, we've got all the colours, so it must be fine. It's like, you know... But then she's it. obviously... I mean, Annalise, I believe, is Scottish, and at one stage we had Scottish Labour leader Kezia Dugdale, who happens to be a out-proud gay woman. Um, in the Cabinet in Scotland, there's Pam Duncan Clancy, who happens to... Because they want disabled MP, she happens to use a wheelchair. The leader now is a man, um, I'm not sure... Is is he Muslim? Um, so sort of thing. So Scottish Labour has everything that she's looking for, but, you know, obviously down here then she seems to be well, bereft. So here's a crazy thing. Why don't we just vote for the people who we think are going to be the best yes. for the job? Madness. Right, we're at the halfway point, but join us for sexual harassment, gender apartheid and obese drivers. You can't say we didn't warn you. See you in two minutes.
The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides of the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubery and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament, but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel... Join me, Andrew Pearce and Bev Turner, Monday to Thursday, 9.30am. Who benefits from that? Not the British public. And on Fridays, join us, Tom Harwood and Ellie Costello from Britain's Newsroom. That's what you get with this show, that's fantastic. If it's happening, we're talking about it on Britain's Newsroom. GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Let's go straight to the mail on Sunday, which even though they've got it in for the BBC, are the BBC helping them out here, Bruce? Well, so it's revealed that Question Time audience member who Fiona Bruce described as, and I quote, the black guy, breaks a silence and says presenter called him to say sorry, but he still wants to know why the BBC deleted the clip. Now, I know a lot of people in their droves don't watch Question Time anymore. You can watch it live when it's being recorded on iPlayer. Stop and talking about the competition! And this competition... <laughs> so this competition... And this comment was made in that, but when they put the programme out, they'd edited it out. Now, I do think it's odd. I happen to like Fiona Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people are... She's got the same surname. Uh, well, no. Oh, she... first name. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll continue talking Sorry. and thank you. Um, I would like to point out that she had fallen off a horse um, and she'd broken her hand. Not that I'm saying that that's... Basically racist. racist. But, it's the, that. but it's the first time that she's ever referred to someone. She would either say the gentleman in the glasses or the blonde-haired woman. It's the first time I think she's ever said anything to, pertaining to the colour of someone's skin. Yeah. So, and then the funny thing is, the guy had got... Just happens to be black. Who happens to be black, indeed. And then the guy, his name is Roberto... Gokan, um, 35, he'd got in touch to say, why did you edit the clip out if you didn't think there was anything wrong with her saying it regards the guy in the blue sweater? Yes. Well, it's, it's an interesting thing, Cressa, because she has... Um, but she's called him to apologise. Yeah, so she's called him to apologise, but I think she, her excuse is a bit weird because she sort of says that she couldn't see any other identifying features... Uh, she was like, oh, I, I was blocked. I'm like, what, you literally just saw his head, you didn't see the colour of his shirt? And Yeah, exactly, she just saw that tiny thing. And then she, she also then says um, that, but I wanted... 
because I'm, it almost like she implies, because I'm so anti-racist, I wanted to make sure that his voice was heard, so I yeah. thought I'd be a little bit racist. Or maybe people don't think it's racist at all, just to go, oh, excuse me, gentleman, the black gentleman in the middle, like, is that racist? Well, I didn't think it was. When I watched the clip back, I thought, fair enough. I, I certainly wouldn't be offended if I were in a row of women of other colours, if, if I was the only white person and they said the, the white woman. But... But then, you know, you, you got... know, who knows what people have experienced their entire life. Well, exactly. Of... It may not be my place to say. Um, but certainly the tone of it was... I mean... I don't know. I, I And once you start getting into, oh, well, I fell off a horse, it's like, no, no, look, just say... Oh, well, she wasn't using that as an excuse. Well, it's just no. you. Well, it was just it was me. You. See, the thing is, Madonna fell off a horse once. I'm going to see her next week. More of that after the break. And she... Everyone thought she had a facelift. I see. Madonna? Yeah, Surely she'd fallen not. off a horse to kind of cover it, if you see what I mean. So. Okay, well, I feel like we've really done that one well. I don't know where it went off. We've, congratulations, you've taken over from the sort of Lewis Schaefer segue there. <laughs> oh, Obs please, no. <laughs> <laughs> Observe next. And, Bruce, what is gender apartheid and how do we stop South Africa doing it? Yes, so Nobel Peace winner uh, joins calls for UN to criminalise gender apartheid. Now, we were talking about this before the show, weren't we? We were. We were. You were what? talking at her. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. We we're purely collaborative, we're purely a discussion. Well, I was saying how this is feminism where it's needed, is yeah. my, my take. I thought we were doing a story tonight about uh, Labour's plans about sexual harassment at work, but... Um, we've I, got that coming up. We've got that coming up. OK, so we'll get to that. So it's very interesting to me how different parts of the world are, are driving feminism in different ways, and I would argue this is entirely appropriate mm -hmm. because because the, uh, clearly the Taliban are, are enacting some kind of gender apartheid if they're not allowing women to have education that's not on in my opinion no no I mean it, it, it's is it the right type using the word apartheid is obviously a very evocative and sure. it's used by people, certainly in Israel, they try and claim it's an apartheid, even though people in Israel... Are, hey, I did bring it back, I lied. But even though uh, Arabs, uh, Arab Israelis um, have full equal rights with, with Israelis, uh, Jewish Israelis. But, so, I'm not sure how helpful that is, but, of course, there is a state where, you, you know, in Afghanistan, you have the Taliban. What they have is this, in Iran as well, and various other countries around the world, the way that women are treated. Um, and But trying to get this put through the um, human rights, uh, UN mm -hmm. human rights... Guy. I mean, when you've got China on the sure, board and you've yeah. got these other countries, uh, human rights abusers, you know, Kazakhstan, UAE, these are not all Pakistan, not always great places to be a woman. Arguably. No, and there is also this argument about the, it not being uh, subjugation, but instead protection. And we would have said that in this country until not that long ago. Mm. Um, so there's that. There is that. All right, well, look, let's do what we were going to talk about. Independent now, Cresta, what rules does Labour want you to start following? Labour reveals new plans to clamp down on sexual harassment at work. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, the Labour Party has unveiled new plans to clamp down on sexual harassment in the workplace, as figures show almost 5 million women experience such behaviour at work each year. And with these stories about sexual harassment, we never get a definition President. of what sexual harassment Five means. 5 million and one. And, yeah, well, that's it. This is it, though, isn't it? Is that sex... I bet there are people... Who would see that? ..who would see that as sexual harassment, and I would say to them, no, it's not. So we don't get a definition, which is... Yes. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. We don't get a definition. Sorry, I just thought of something. Yeah, classic interrupting woman there. Is it about there. Holly Willoughby or...? No, 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 no. I, I told you I wanted that in because I know about that, but, you <laughs> is know... Is it relevant whatever. to this? It is relevant to this because Judy Murray, Andy Murray's yeah. um, mother, she came out recently saying she was a victim of sexual harassment or sexual assault and it was to do with someone putting a hand on her leg, I think. Now, I don't know about you, I get my backside felt up at gigs constantly from... Show I don't even... No, honestly, but I do. And I'm not saying it's right, but I'm not necessarily sure I would determine that, but then who am I to say whatever well, anyone is going through, if you see what I mean? It could lead to men, more. I mean, rape is carried out by men, sexual attacks. Yeah, and there's it's definitely... It's not that men can't be attacked. There is a huge difference between the way men and women receive sexual advances. I completely yeah. accept that. If mm. anything, I don't think we make enough of that, because that's the point. I think oftentimes men don't realise what they're doing is upsetting mm. women. So there's that. Um, and, I mean... What else can we say about this? Uh, they, uh, the latest data from the government... I, I'm still interested in these figures. It reveals that three in ten women currently in work suffered some form of sexual harassment mm. 
in, in the last year. And I just, we never get a definition. And I personally don't think I've ever been sexually harassed in the workplace. So I constantly get this diet of these stories and I just, I don't know what to say about it. OK, well, um, I'm not going to say anything now. I'm just going to move on quickly because there were too many jokes that came into my brain. Moving on to Telegraph, where a woman's only shelter needs to change its name, Cressida. Uh, women only homeless shelter agrees to take in trans people who self-identify. So this charity, Glassdoor, I mean, they're a homelessness charity. Now, previously, there was no... They're making the point that they didn't have separate gender accommodation for homeless people. So... I just think that's worth knowing at the beginning of the story. But they've then come in and created a woman's space and specifically said they'll allow trans women in there. Yeah. And, of course, I, I'm amazed that they're not a bit more with the times because this is currently this stuff is all kind of unravelling. These are the most vulnerable women and it's totally inappropriate to have biological yeah. males in these spaces. And because, Bruce, actually part of equality law is that there is a protection in there for these single-sex spaces. Right? Well, there is, but for many years the importance of keeping men out of women's shelter has been such that any person who enters, including plumbers and electricians, must be female. So with that as one of their kind of mission statements, then... Yeah, does that not fly in the face of this new policy? Yeah, no, absolutely, of course it does. Uh, but then they're going going along with this. But you know, in 2020, they talk about a woman being raped in a mixed sex uh, shelter. This is exactly why you have it. And in in uh, one of the things that first enlightened me to this, what was going on with gender ideology was there's been a uh, a woman's shelter in Montreal that has been sued for the last eight years and lost all its funding. To they've been trying to get them, to force them to allow men identifying as women into it, and they actually finally just, I believe, won their case. But it seems like an, it's like prisons and whatever. You have very vulnerable people here, and they need to be protected in those spaces. And it's not about trans women being. Well, no, it's, it's, it's about men. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Right, one more station to go. It's a doozy. Dead birds, poo exhibit, and the death of the pork pie. Let's go on a bang. Join me, Andrew Pearce and Bev Turner, Monday to Thursday, 9.30am. Who benefits from that? Not the British public. And on Fridays, join us, Tom Harwood and Ellie Costello from Britain's Newsroom. That's what you get with this show, that's fantastic. If it's happening, we're talking about it on Britain's Newsroom. GB News, Britain's news channel. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my show, The Real World, every Friday at 7pm. I'm not eating bloody cat. Are you Delicious. Put your mouth. OK. Here comes, a, here comes a train. Reminds me of the scene in Singing in the Rain. Adam, is that a good one? Whoa! Whoa! Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomney, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Nightmare commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's at drive time, 3 till 6pm, Monday to Friday on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB Plus on the smart speaker app and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's, on GB News and GB News Radio. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows... Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. 
The show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever, and that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News, Britain's news channel, Welcome back to Headliners and kicking off with the Telegraph, Cresta. And does this development mean I should finally leave my space? It might be time. Does ad-free Instagram mean the era of data harvesting is over? Ooh, talk, talk to us about data harvesting. Does it mean that? Well, um, it turns out that if you're Sexy not... Sexy data harvesting. Mm, should I mm, allowed to say that? I don't know. I'm not don't sure. come after me. <laughs> I don't think you should be harvesting sexy data, Thoughts. personally. You can't. Anyway, uh, when when we use Facebook and things like that, we if we're not paying, we are the product, guys. Have you heard that? No. If you're not paying, you're the product, your attention. Because, mm. yeah, because they can sell you stuff. So we're worth a fortune. But if we pay for things like uh, Instagram or whatever, we won't get advertised at. So I think that sounds like a really good solution. They're talking about 11 quid a month to use Meta, Facebook. Um, mm. I would pay £11 not to use Facebook uh, these days. But you can do that for free. I've never used it. You've never used what? Facebook? No, I've never used Facebook. But are you on Instagram or any of the other stuff? Yeah. OK. Yeah. So, I mean, do you get bombarded with all the adverts? And also, when they kind of, like, they take those little bit... It's incredible. I know everyone jokes about it or talks about it. It's like you mention a song or oh you my mention... Oh, my God. I'm, so I'm doing some DIY and then suddenly... I'm still getting adverts for bathrooms and I've had mine done, if you see what I mean. And I've yeah. tried to get in touch with them and say, I've got it, I'll show you a photo of it, you have to stop showing me this. I'm, I'm beginning to go off Instagram. It's a very needy thing because the minute you follow someone, follow these people, but watch how you talk to them. You know, if you reply to someone in a DM, remember, this is a supportive place. And it's like, well, tell the HMRC that because when you phone the HMRC, and there is a point to this, they're like, our staff are allowed to work without being scouted and screamed at. And it's like, well, yeah, I'm also allowed to not be cut off and tutted at and hear them heavy breathing. So it works both ways. But no, I'm done with Instagram. It's just annoying. But it's also a bit of a class thing, isn't it? If you have to pay to get to not be hassled by adverts. And the other thing that they're talking about is in the EU, the laws that have come through now, they're not allowed to collect that data anyway. So it's almost, they're like, hey, guys, you could just pay for it. So if they're not allowed to collect data, will we not see any repeat data? No, I think it's like it's all a bit general. Like, they're just going to right. take the very basic data. Okay. You're 47 years old, so you're going to get a lot of prostate stuff. <laughs> That's my life. But £11 a month? Yeah, but then Twitter's... About I'm 12, now it? So paying uh, for YouTube oh, Premium. Best thing I ever did. Well, YouTube really? Premium? What's that? I know well, what YouTube no is. Oh, right. Well, yeah, Actually, go. that makes sense. I'd, try, I'd, I'd spare you. It's to do with Kylie Minogue. We'll right, move on. Observer next. And Bruce, a very short sequel here to Hitchcock's The Birds. Yes, I felt like Tippy Hedren when I was uh, reading it. Yes, at least a thousand birds have died from colliding with one Chicago building in one day. Now, this is McCormick Place, which is a convention centre. Mm -hmm. So if you think of somewhere like the XL or Ells Court, but it's all glass. Yeah. All glass. And it's absolutely massive. And the poor birds are flying into it. Stupid birds. Are they stupid? Stupid. Well, they're dead. That's their lived experience. We don't know what brought them to that. Maybe there was childhood trauma in their nest. Fine. Uh, but there's, it's, what is it, a thousand birds or something? A thousand birds. A lot of birds. Yeah. A lot of birds. I love that this is somebody's job to study this. Um, mm. I'm saying that with a smirk. But I actually do think this is really sad. There's a lot of nuggets there, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, sorry, but I, that's, I should be crying as well. Do you know, though, that, that it was, uh, was it in the last ten years that McDonald's said, don't worry, the nuggets are made of breast meat. Well, what were they made of before? Like, tendons and claws and beaks? No, I've seen yeah. it on, on the Facebook that I should be paying for, so I don't have to see this kind of thing. OK. Yeah, but it's that sort of... But they, uh, I've never heard about this before, but they, Chicago, where this has taken place, have the Bird Safe Buildings Act. So, obviously, they're really getting on... Generally, with I'm not a big fan of more legislation. But this is one you can get behind. Well, it's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, they, also bird death. they also have a huge amount of light pollution uh, from buildings in Chicago, and that's affecting the quality of the wee birds. We have learned a lot with yeah, that story. Yeah, we're right. ornithologists. I know, very good. More... Uh, does that sound to do birds? No, more observer action now, Krista, and this is uh, my Sunday with the kids sorted. Brilliant. Like something from Bake Off, Animal Poo Exhibition opens in London. Uh, I don't know if we've got any photos for this, but even if we haven't, you can imagine it. it I looks, can do a live. It looks yeah. exactly... No, but that's the only one she hasn't done. So this lady, she was a zookeeper, mm. and uh, she was enormously fond of the animals. I can imagine that you would become fond of them. Then mm. one day, her favourite elephant gets taken away. Oh. And as a souvenir, like she decides to keep... A poo. As you do. And she dries it out, and nobody questions her mental health. There's no, no I've support. I've got a couple of exes like well, this. Well, she's, 
So she's now got this enormous collection of animal poos and she thinks, I know what I'll do. Rather than seek help, I'll turn it into an exhibition. Um, and she does make the point that, that she doesn't have any human faeces, so if you want to volunteer... Phew, so you it's not really weird, is it? Complete the collection. What do you, what do you think, I, I, Well, I love the title, The Origin of Faeces Poo at the Zoo. I think that's really Zoo. catchy. Good. And apart, Well, this is the thing, because over a 1,000 children have already booked to see it, which just proves, as we would say in Scotland, <laughs> juniors love a jobby. They, well, they do. You know what? I see this as sort of biological version of, uh, of horrible histories or something. Yeah, I think it's they, funny. They, like, they got a, a wombat that, that does a square poo. Who knew? Well, exactly. This, this is very, very and interesting also, stuff. Also, there's a Viking stool in that museum in York. A big fossilised oh, plot. I didn't know about that. Wow. I know. Wow. Okay. Well, I think, yeah, kids will love it. Of Why course not? they will. Yeah. Anyway, looking forward to it. Uh, Mail on Sunday has an interesting story here. Bruce, uh, instead of Jurassic Park, can we have Park Park? Well, how the sycamore gap tree could rise again. Scientists claim they will have the technology to grow an identical copy of the felled tree at Hadrian's Wall. Mm. When the sycamore gap tree fell on September the 28th, hundreds, well, it was cut down in hundreds its of years of British history fell with it. So what they're going to do is they're going to do what Barbara Streisand did with her favourite dog, Sugar, and clone it. They're going to clone it and bring it back. Yeah, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing that tree in 300 years. Yes. Yeah, I mean, presumably it's still going to grow at tree speed. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you think you'll be signed off with depression by then? Because you've been alive for so long. I'm, no, I'm very happy. You're right. We're going to do <laughs> one final story. This is the death of British culture, Cresta, in the Telegraph. Britain's pork pie supply at risk as rising costs Bite. Oh my so this is really where, where it hits. Uh, Britain's pork pie supply could be hit by a slowdown after leading food UK manufacturer warned it could scale back production because there's been all these difficult things happening. Uh, you know, we've, we've obviously had all the COVID disruption. There's been all this cost of... The, the cost of the pork is, is going up, obviously. Is it the pork and not the pastry? You no, know, it's all of it. And it also revealed... This is a strange side note. Uh, it, it also revealed it suffered a £5 million hit from shutting Revolution Kitchen, a plant-based subsidiary. So it was fake pork? No, no, it's just it's a big food company with right. lots of there, there seems to be, I, I lots can understand your pies. confusion, Bruce, because there's a lot of confusion here to why they're exactly cutting it. It feels to me like they're, they're threatening us. It feels, and not me personally, I'm not that bothered, but threatening you guys, and they're like, we're going to stop making them, so you better buy them now and hoard them up or whatever. It's maybe to do with the butter as well, because you remember when they had to put things on the lard pack because it was so expensive. <laughs> Show is nearly over. Let's take another quick look at Sunday's front pages. It's true. The Mail on Sunday, don't kill me. Sunday Telegraph, Hamas terrorists and butcher civilians as stunned Israel suffers 9-11 moment. And obviously, thoughts and prayers go to them. Observer, hundreds die and hostages held as a mass assault shocks Israel. The Sun on Sunday, BGT acts left me suicidal. The Mirror, Holly and Phil mend rift over kidnap horror. And finally, the Daily Star, scream me up, Scotty. Those were your front pages. That is all we have time for. Thank you very much to my guests, Cresta Wesson and Bruce Devlin. We are back tomorrow at 11 p.m. with Andrew Doyle, Victor Daniels and Lewis Schaefer. And if you're watching at 5 a.m., stay tuned for breakfast. Have a great weekend. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Nightmare commute. Kick it up a gear with me, Patrick Christie's, at drive time, 3 till 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, on GB News Radio. You can listen online and on DAB+, Plus on the Smart Speaker app and on the GB News app. And if you've got an Alexa, all you have to say is, Alexa, play GB News. We're also on TuneIn and the Radio Player apps. From the school run to rush hour, get revved up with me, Patrick Christie's, on GB News and GB News Radio. Join me, Andrew Pearce and Bev Turner, Monday to Thursday, 9.30am. Who benefits from that? Not the British public. And on Fridays, join us, Tom Harwood and Ellie Costello from Britain's Newsroom. That's what you get with this show, that's fantastic. If it's happening, we're talking about it on Britain's Newsroom. GB News, Britain's news channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too.
People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon, on GB News, Britain's news channel. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel... It's Saturday night.